Hey, it's Lewis Horseman here. It's May 25, 2022. This video will just be a refresher uh, about the fact that investing, especially if you're a long term investor, value investor, 90% uh, of the activity is pretty much waiting. Waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting some more. Obviously, that comes with the fact that if you have a one to two year horizon, etc. Uh, that means that as soon as you bought a stock where you think, hey, this is a story that's probably going to be worth a lot more in one to two years or even more than that. Uh, and you think that the price today is way too cheap in light of what you expect the company to have proved up in terms of value over the next 12, 24, 36 months. Uh, that means that as soon as you buy, you have a 12 to 24 to 36 and you know forever rolling potentially uh, period of time where all you do really is wait for the case to play out. And if you are somewhat right, uh, you'll probably get a multi bagger over that time frame. But that, of course, entails waiting and waiting for a considerable amount of time. Because as long as you're not just a catalyst hunter, that means you'll have to wait for a bunch of news re releases to have passed. So, I mean, if, if you have a, the typical investor is obviously a more of a catalyst hunter that they're betting on the next exciting news release. And that's pretty much the case. So they buy and they hope they uh, want a company pulls out some, uh, put, puts out some good results and then the share price might go up. So then they can sell whatever. Whereas if you're a more of a long term investor, and uh, like we see now, for example, uh, you have companies putting out good results, uh, but the share price doesn't react too much. And it, it, especially if, if they're negative results, it goes down. And regardless of what the, or typically re regardless of how cheap the company already is. I mean, even, even if bad results are way beyond priced in already, it typically leads someone to sell. Because again, most people just are after the get rich quick thing and they don't think of the price to long term value gap. But if you have a longer time horizon, that means m maybe your bet is that, hey, over the next 10 news releases, at the end of these 10 coming news releases, I think this company will be worth more. I think that the uh, share price should have gone higher, especially if we go into a, a better sentiment environment, obviously. But again, that, that just means that there's going to be a hell of a lot of waiting. And take Great Bear, for example, which I've used m on many occasions as a good example. I mean, look at how much waiting you had to do. Uh, well, not too much when you actually fact, uh, think of the fact that you got a 10 bagger in like what, uh, three, three years or whatever. But most people can't wait for three years to get a 10 or 20 bagger. Most people can't wait a month to get a 50% return, etc. I mean, that, that's the edge you have if you're patient because almost nobody is patient. But if you look at this short, for example, I mean, here's the... Well, when the discovery really started to sink in, but then it traded sideways for uh, maybe one, two month and, uh, months, and then it jumped. And then it traded somewhat down uh, for a couple of months, and then it started to go higher. And then down for, you know, e even lo a bit longer than this period. But if you take from this peak short, it went higher a bit, but this was pretty much, you know, somewhere around the same peaks and somewhere around the same bottom. So this was just from November to early May, let's say, or may maybe one could say that this was when I really got going again. So it's like, we're talking like six months of wait and then it trended higher. And then it got into another consolidation period. 
and then it actually this was the 2020 flash crash and it didn't break out of this let's say consolidation uh, until May so from September to May uh, sideways and then it ramped up and then we had a huge or very long and obviously testing a lot of people's patience uh, with this zigzagging movement lower before it all of a sudden broke out of this downtrend and then you know ripped uh, in just a few months and you got a you know went from 12 13 dollars to 28 which was obviously a great result and you could wait a long time to have a hundred percent return Again, I, I just remind people that the average stock market return uh, in the long period is like 8% per year. So you can imagine how long you would have to wait to, okay, if this went up to 28, you would, you know, a double is like $14. So all of this period here, I mean, would give you a 100% return within less than a year, which would be good for m multiple years. Uh, and if this went nowhere for X amount of years, you would still handedly beat the market. But the point is, just look at how much. The only thing you had to do was actually wait and get a 10 bagger. Even though it looks super, let's say, exhausting, testing, grinding movements, long period, very long periods of time where it even went down, not only sideways, but down. But if you look at from the beginning to the end, this was a huge return. But typically, I mean, you have these long grinding down periods, but when it gets going, it gets going pretty quickly. And that's what my experience is with this sector that the corrections are way longer than the rallies. So what does that mean? That means if you're not, if you don't have the patience, you could have, you could have had patience, but you bowed out here, for example. And, and maybe you look at this additional zigzag action. You're like, yeah, yeah, I was so right to get out of this stock has gone. It has gone nowhere. And then you forget about it. And then you come back and it's ramped, recouped all the, short-term losses and obviously these bottoms are all higher than uh, the previous bottoms even with a flash crash in between so i mean it's it really is all about the waiting which is the hardest part actually because in my opinion i don't think it's hard to see that there's a bunch of high quality juniors out there that are really really cheap especially cheap relative to the future if they have probable growth like bear, uh, great bear had this was growing the, the value of the company was growing throughout all this time but you still had these massive consolidations uh, and zigzag movements before price kept up with value again and then it went below value and then up perhaps above value and then it retraced and then up to let's say fair value at least what Kinross was uh, willing to pay and this is one of the sentiment trackers I use I mean this is pretty much we're, we're just I'm just waiting I mean I'm not anywhere close to selling any of the juniors not even close uh, when the tide changes, everything's going to go up. It's going to be rigged in our favor. I don't know when that is. So maybe it will take one, two years before we reach a sentiment high again. So that's, that's basically just okay. You have to be okay with waiting for one to two years. And again, that's beyond what most people can stomach. And that's why, I mean... 19 in 20 don't beat an index why i mean i would say impatience is one of the main culprits because uh, not a lot of people would have the stomach or patience to sit through even in one of the best success stories in this entire space uh, a tiny minority would have the patience to actually uh, sit through this they, they would you know Typically, people panic sell or they, they give up because, okay, they waited this long and 
when it doesn't go anywhere it's, they're like yeah you know th this sector isn't working this stock isn't working i'm not seeing the instant gratification i i i appear to be wrong for a year or more and then you know you actually lose lose out and of course like i've shown before this is what people want this is the kind of price action people want they want to be uh, pampered and spoiled by Mr. Market that whenever they buy they want to see a rising price that somebody is willing to buy higher than where they bought and that makes them comfortable confident and they feel like yes I'm doing something right because share prices uh, just keeps going up in a straight line but obviously if you want to make the most amount of money assuming that you actually invested throughout all this time i mean use dry powder this is the kind of stock action you would want because if you were buying both of these stocks during this entire time period you would make a lot more money in this stock because every buy down here might have e even up to this point might let's say have a 200 percent future return whereas uh up here you might be down to i don't know 100 percent returns and then it just gradually gradually tapers off uh, and uh, up here you're you're at let's say at this point in time you might be looking at a 30 percent return but here you're still looking at like a 130 percent return so if you invested let's say fifty thousand dollars over this time period you, you the ones who were the one who was buying this excruciating consolidation action would make a lot more in the end than this person who appeared to be right throughout this entire period uh, and then uh, it's like what i think is happening for example in loro i see i see consolidation uh kind of you know similar to this in a lot of juniors i mean Elora has just kept on hitting hitting and hitting in their with their drilling uh, values increasing with every news release pretty much yet the share price has been consolidating for over a year and we've had consolidations like this before uh, this was only around 50 market days this was around 120 market days so consolidation this consolidation was longer in time than this and this consolidation here is a lot longer than this and you know multiple times longer than this so this is a very frustrating consolidation a lot of people will i mean especially when you see them hitting 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 and, and you don't get any quote reward for it yet uh, so it's like i i can only imagine how many people are uh, thinking of selling because they're seeing that hey this isn't working this isn't working. It's gone nowhere for over a year. This isn't working. I should be in some other stock. But every time, uh, as the this kind of box consolidation uh, ended, you see these ramps, and then into a new consolidation, and then a big ramp. So that's and I've all obviously been talking about this. The the longer a consolidation takes, the closer we are to the breakout by definition, wh whichever way it's going to break. And of course, the longer uh, the longer time passes, the closer we are to the next sentiment high, regardless of when that actually is. Even if it's here, whatever, this is obviously closer to this point in time than, time than this point in time. That means the compound results are better from here than here. So selling becomes worse the longer time passes. Uh, and obviously, uh, interestingly enough, uh, that's why people tend to i mean uh, everyone will have sold out almost everyone will have sold out at the exact peak of it being worse the worst possible time to sell both in time and price uh, so so this is basically i mean I, i'm all about waiting right now i mean i'm enjoying the summer i'm out you know i'm working out i'm i'm reading books researching companies uh uh, you know taking strolls out in the in the summer weather here in Sweden because uh, I've already placed my bets I'm even less reluctant to sell here than here and here because th this is one case where it's like 
value just keeps increasing and one day when the voting machine goes from extremely pessimistic to very optimistic uh, these price shorts here on average are gonna converge with the value trajectory and typically like here probably shoot above it as well so i mean th this kind of return here from one dollar to peaked at five i mean this was several hundred percent in a relatively short time span way shorter than the consolidation time here so Elora, for example i expect this consolidate this is going to end by definition unless it consolidates for an infinite amount in time which is not going to happen so it's going to break out in uh, one way or another and given the results my bet has been for quite some time that it's going to be up because i think like the analysts some analyst reports out there they they have eight to sixteen dollar price target meaning that that's where what they think allure is on a risk adjusted basis that it's worth and you know i pretty much agree i'm leaning towards more towards sixteen dollars actually so I, I think we might have uh, one heck of a revaluation coming in stocks like Eloro. And we see this consolidation pattern in other stories. This is Goliath Resources. Uh, yeah, Goliath Resources. Uh, peaked here. Uh, yeah, kind of like uh, Eloro. Peaked in, in uh, a year ago from now. And then went down. And then it looks like it's forming some kind of cup and handle. So, I mean, it, the, again, this is all about waiting i mean on paper you you're not being rewarded at all or has not been rewarded uh for uh, almost a year now and again most people will at as we get closer to the end of any consolidation uh if you any if you have you know 100 people bought here um most of them will be out by this time because so much time has passed some, some will throw in the towel here 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 and when the max amount of my, uh, people have thrown in the towel towel the path of least resistance becomes up because there's nobody selling yet because some will not sell i mean some are value as the investors etc or have infinite patience and they refuse to sell so then uh when everybody's thought of selling have sold pretty much uh, there's no the selling pressure starts to go away and it will be easier and easier to move the stock higher that's why you have these you know staggered uh, ramp ramp ups in in price because i mean this was panic selling so when the panic sellers are gone there's nobody selling down here anymore and that just leaves buyers so you have this room 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 kind of action uh uh, so like Goliath, I mean, store is better than ever. Uh, they're going to be drilling quite soon. Will be one of the most exciting drill campaigns that I am aware of. Pretty unique system and story. Uh, ROI on this coming drill campaign could be, you know, one of the best in the sector, I think. And uh, like uh, Eloro, extremely high ROI on drilling. Uh, so a lot can change for i mean think about how, how good could it how big could iska iska be uh 10 news releases from now versus versus what is it it is priced at today and they just keep i mean it just keeps on growing growing and this news release highlighted i mean they've done uh, geophysical studies uh, going down to like one kilometer depth and it appears to get perhaps even stronger and they think they have a pretty good grasp of the uh, where the feeder zone is and uh, when you look at some of the uh, this here for example uh, I mean there are underground uh, historic mines down here 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 and they've been drilling up to this point pretty much so it's like the how Large Iska Iska could be in like 10, 20 news releases. I have no idea. I, I just know that it appears to be, it is huge already. And they're not missing in any drill holes really. And it could still, who knows, double from here. So it's just an obscene uh, amount of, you know, possible value to be created and long runway. So again, if I had to guess, will Iska Iska be worth 
less or more in one to two years or in you know 10 to 20 to 30 news releases i would say considerably worth more and if i compare that to the price i'm paying today i think there's going to be an up overwhelming pressure to the upside because this price to value gap is just increasing with every, every news release uh, but that's uh, you know again uh, when sentiment gets up here and people start to appreciating what the juniors have done and perhaps even over appreciating uh, these these stocks are gonna be lit on fire pretty much i think uh, sk mining similar story here peaked uh, early 2021 or a year of zigzagging consolidation action and just look here it's like yeah okay some kind of consolidation ramped up uh, some kind of consolidation then a big spike and same here it's like consolidation big spike and now with we had some artificial selling because of uh, insider exercising options etc uh, but overall this looks just like a huge consolidation pattern to me that's going to frustrate and uh, get a lot of people to sell uh, simply because time passes and they're not they're, they don't they're not earning anything on on paper etc whereas i think a lot of these stocks again uh, don't know when but they're gonna revalue and and uh, the price to value gaps are gonna close and typically, again, in the mining space, it appears that the, the revaluations to the upside are much quicker than the corrections. So you, you might have, you know, a consolidation of like 500 days. But when the rev revaluation gets going, especially since you have a growth story where the gap is closing. That, so that's just more and more pressure building to close this gap. So when it's actually released, the more time has passed, it's just going to be such a long, uh, wide gap, let's say, to, to uh, uh, let's, uh, tighten or close. Uh, and uh, it's like Pacific Ridge, another northern explorer that's not too far away from drilling. Kind of similar pattern to Goliath, actually. Uh, sideways action looks like some kind of cup and handle like here and you know sometime in the future i expect this to break to the upside because this is so cheap and if they have good results on top of that and they have we have sentiment getting uh, better so we have uh, this kind of uh, let's say reversion to the mean and and hopefully to the next sentiment high i mean you you could yeah, I think some some juniors will do several hundreds of percent. And when you think about that, which in my opinion is inevitable because the sector is unsustainably cheap, you could wait many years for a, you know, 3 400% return. Even if it took 3 years, you could say that okay, obvious I'm, I'm willing to wait three years for let's say three four hundred percent return so i can go out go i could go and live in a hut for three years whatever or or have a vacation or what whatever do whatever keeps you in the game because sentiment always changes and we're gonna have a mean reversion and it's gonna be biblical i think and if if gold also breaks out of the cup and handle in us dollars you could multiply that mean reversion by some factor uh so yeah it's like basically the the gist of this video is that yes uh if you're a value investor a long-term investor uh majority of the time will simply be waiting for the market to go from irrationally pessimistic to rationally greedy and given how huge the returns are when you go from one extreme to another uh, you should be prepared and willing to wait for months and years for this to happen and if you can find stories that are growing if uh, growing as well You'll have higher highs, higher lows, even though you will have these severe 
long winded consolidations between the revaluations. Uh, so it's like, yeah, I, I know, I, I know I'm buying cheap. I, I know I'm gonna on average make a killing on my portfolio. And uh, since I don't know a sector that uh, has higher expected future returns than the junior sector, especially the gold junior sector, uh, I'm not changing my bets. I'm, I'm waiting for these consolidations to break out. And if I'm up, I mean, if, if I wait two years and get a 300% on my portfolio, that will be... I ex actually expect to get more than that, especially since I, I try to enter as many private placements as I can, uh, which means that when these, I mean, things get going, uh, maybe you have a worn strike price uh, here, for example. I mean, when we cross this level, for, for example, this is just a theoretical example. Uh, this is going to give you a further boost in your upside. So it's like, what am I, what, what am I doing right now? Uh, I'm trying to get into as many private placements of high quality stores as I can. Because if we're starting here and you have a, the, the average warrant kicks in here. When we get to this place, let's say within two years in, in high sentiment, you're going to make a boatload more money than if you had no warrants. And obviously I would rather go into placements at this level than at this level where it's like, okay, let's say you needed to stock to go to this level within two years if you participated in a pl private placement here. But that's already an extreme and the, the most likely scenario is that it actually will a top somewhere here because everyone who's thinking of buying has bought and it's going to go down and your warrants will expire worthless but if you buy if you get into product placements down here i mean there's a lot of room to run from this level to this level and this will be a risk-free upside from your warrants so if i expect 300 percent let's say within two years or more from the stocks I own, when I factor in the warrants I'm accumulating, it's going to be way more than 300%. Something to think about. And again, if you have a, especially if you have a growth story, it's going to be uh, more likely that the share price will actually be above the uh, warrant strike price as well, given enough time. Whereas in a more about trading sardine, uh, you'll actually have to i mean these highs are pretty much this in the same ballpark whereas in great bear the highs are higher yeah so anyway it's like uh main takeaway is that uh we just we just have to wait we just have to wait and now we're in this kind of consolidation uh period i don't know how long it will continue May maybe it's like maybe Laura breaks out in October, whatever. It's like, I just think that a lot of stocks I own are way too cheap. And especially given where I think they, what they will be worth in the, after the next 10 to 20 news releases are out. Uh, so it's like, you have to be patient if you want to make the big bucks. Otherwise you can be a, you know, some kind of trader, etc. Uh, but I prefer to accumulate as much as I can as cheaply as possible before what I uh, deem likely to happen, which is that a lot of these juniors are going to go up a lot within uh, within a you know months or a year or two from now. Thanks for listening. Consider me biased. I own shares of all companies I mentioned. I think uh, many are sponsors: uh, Eloro, Goliath. Pacific Ridge, SK, yeah, uh, so uh, don't treat this as investing advice, uh, I'm just saying what, how I'm thinking, what I'm doing, and I'm, I don't share your losses or your profits, uh, thanks for listening, hit, uh, hit, hit the like button if you enjoy the content, bye.